Sasha Baron Cohen is a one-man cinematic machine whose movies have grossed over $800 million. Wow. The actor and writer has offended people all across the political spectrum, plus the entire country, the whole country of Kazakhstan, with his outrageously brilliant, hilarious, very funny characters. Booyah, Kasha. Where's it back? Where's it back? Hi, I love your hat. Right. I would love to become a professional whistler. I'm pretty amazing at it now. But I want to get, like, even better and make my living out of it. Because the NASCAR has gone French. I am coming for you, Ricky Bobby. I is here with my main man. His name be New Gingrich. The most important TV fashion show in any German-speaking country. Apart from Germany. May the good Lord smile on you. Until we meet again. Ladies and gentlemen, Barack Sakia. We support your war of terror. We must keep on with the NATO mission and bring him to justice. I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> that last clip is from The Dictator, where he plays a dangerously and delusional tyrant starting a new life in America. It opened this week, and we're pleased to have Sasha Baron Cohen in Studio 57. Welcome. Hello, how are you? Uh, $800 million. Is the secret to this, uh, with these characters, you can do the most outrageous things and take the most outrageous risk? Well, yes, there's a freedom in playing these... Uh you know, extreme characters, but, you, you know, you're not just being outrageous for the sake of it. I mean, in Borat and Bruno in the Ali G show, occasionally, you know, obviously the first aim is to be as funny as you can, but, you know, occasionally you, you know, we end up uncovering some unpleasant truths and people end up <laughs> over, really opening yeah, exactly. up. Exactly. Yes. Behind all the madness there is yeah. truth. Yes. Your, your friends say, the friends who know you well say that you, you've always, as a time you were a little kid, had no chutzpah, had you, that you had chutzpah and no fear. And that sort of drives you today. Do you think that that's true? Is that how you operate? Uh, I don't think I've got you. no fear. No, I think, uh, you know, I do, listen, you know, there's been things that I've done in Borat and Bruno where, you know, you're going into a scene and you know that there's a chance you'll get injured. You know, yeah. for example, in the cage fight in Bruno, where there's 1,200 very angry people in there and I'm about to sort of make out with the guy and there's going to be a riot, and I know there's going to be a riot. It's not that I'm not scared. I am scared, but I'm able to overcome the fear. Uh -huh. so the, that's what I'm good at. <laughs> where do the characters come from, like the most recent, The Dictator? Well, the, the inspiration of The Dictator was really Colonel Gaddafi. Oh. Who, you know, he was. He's obviously, yeah. What well, he's obviously, you know, I mean, it's a mixture of various different characters, and it was based on an old character I had. But Colonel Gaddafi was kind of the most absurd of the dictators. You know, obviously vicious, but you know, would dress unintentionally like a 65-year-old woman. Uh, often yeah, broke right, right. wind during interviews yeah. with the BBC. Yeah. Had 15 virgin guards who protected them at all times. Very few of whom remained as virgins. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, for, as research, I met up with uh, Mohammed Al-Fayed, the father of right. Dodi Al-Fayed right. mm -hmm. and the ex-owner of Harrods, who knew uh, Gaddafi. And uh, I said, what, did you ever have any interaction with him? He said, yes. You know, before the days of Viagra, he said, I used to, to supply him with genital suppositories so that he could extend his sexual performance. So apparently Gaddafi, Gaddafi would send someone to Al Fayed every three months for these kind of special suppositories, you know, in the pre-Viagra days. So that then would... he could do what again? No. Well, no, but the thing is, these dictators, the one yeah. thing that links them together, you know, is there they have many women. You know, yes. what does the most powerful man in the world do? He gets no, 30 we... women, you know, the bunga bunga parties. Exactly. Yes. You want to I don't want to talk about. No, no, no we, we, we definitely get the joke. Do you ever wonder or, or ever worry about offending someone, or do you just think, look, people, it's a joke. Just stay with me, please. Do you, is, does that ever cross your mind? Not really. I mean, you know, the idea is that, you know, comedy should be free, you know. And, you know, to single out a particular group and say we can't make a joke about them is almost a form of prejudice, you know. And it's, it's kind of patronising. This is the first time I've seen you not in character. And my, me too. <laughs> <laughs> because 
other than the fact that we asked because we wanted to see you. Not well, it's a different kind of movie. I mean, this movie, I'm not undercover. It's not with real people. It's not yeah. a documentary. It's a, it's a story. It's a kind of, you know, if you imagine Colonel Gaddafi uh, out, you know, out of power and working in a vegan health food store in Brooklyn, yes. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of thing. So, so in order to convey that... I now, think, your mother and dad wanted you to go to Cambridge and wanted you to go to law school. They yes. must be proud. Now, are they surprised by <laughs> anything that's come out of your movie career? Uh, well, I did go to Cambridge. I ended up not going to law school. You know, bear in mind, you know, when I grew up in London, you know, in a suburb of London, there were no sort of people who went to Hollywood and started making movies. So, you know, when I told my parents I wanted to become an actor, they assumed it was a life of poverty. Same yep. thing with me. Yeah. And I didn't know anybody in television. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So... It seemed absurd and, you know... But you gave yourself five years, you said, to make it. Why five years? Well, how did you come up with five? Well, I said and five said... years in order to make enough money to kind of feed yeah. myself, you know. Uh -huh. And that was it. And uh, at the end of five years, actually, I landed the job as, you know, playing this reporter, which I made up the character of Ali G. Yeah. Yes. What's interesting to Ali me G. as well is that what you do in character is not unlike some of the things you would do in which you would take on character to get admitted to things, even at Cambridge, into backstage and into theatre so yes. you could do things. Yes, well, listen... You pose as a waiter or, or as part of the, the crew. Yes, well, listen, at Cambridge, you know, the thing about it is you... Because I didn't work very hard, I was mainly acting. <laughs> yes. One of the things I had to realise was how to fake it and how to blag <laughs> my way through university. Yes. So, you know, there was a training there. I was surprised but, to see also, you've had some great writers who now not only are writers but actors like Seth Rogen, yes. Jonah Hill, yes. have yes. written with you. Yes, yes. Well, Seth Rogen, who's obviously a brilliant talent, yeah. he uh, works with his partner, Evan Goldberg, who produces all his movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't have enough money on the Ali G show to pay for both of them, so I said, listen, <laughs> we're just going to choose you, Seth. And he said, no, 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 I, I go everywhere with my partner. I said, all right, you're going to have to come on the road with us, you're going to have to share a bed, yes. and you're going to have to share a wage. And they, they said, fine. And the, the two guys wow. would write in their underpants in bed <laughs> with, like, a laptop, you know, 15 yeah. beers around. But I'm it? thinking that kind of works for you. I have to say, I met your wife recently at a book party. She oh, yeah. is so lovely, Isla. And I'm thinking uh, uh, somebody's partner really shows the type of person that they are is where I'm going with this. So I'm thinking she's so lovely, she's such a doll. You cannot be possibly obnoxious at home. You can't be. Well, I try to be. I try to be. No, 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 no. <laughs> How do you see yourself as a husband and a dad? You've got two lovely, two lovely children. Uh, well, I, I see it. I'm curious about what you're like, Sasha. You know, I, I try and keep uh, my private life separate. Yes, you know, yes. And you the know, more you I, do that, the more outrageous you can be in public. Yes, exactly. So, you know, I try and, you know, be... Uh, do you know the next character? Well, the next thing I'm probably doing is Freddie Mercury. I'm doing a biopic. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and then I'm doing... Uh, I'm working Les Miserables in England with uh, Russell Crowe uh, Crow and Hugh Jackman. And Hugh Jackman. Oh, uh, wow. With the director of The King's Speech. So I'm starting that on Monday, oh. actually. This, this is live, so I know we have to go. But what would you have done if somebody had walked up and thrown some ashes on you this live, uh, during this live broadcast? Would you have thought that was funny? Um... W depends if they were actual ashes. I mean, with uh, <laughs> with Ryan Seacrest, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with Ryan Seacrest, it was actually a bit of flour, and I sent him a new jacket afterwards. Uh, it had a little label inside, made by yeah. child slave labour. We, we have to go, unfortunately. It's Got great it, to see Sasha. you. Thank All you right. for coming. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having Good me. Good luck. On.